Father John joins us now. We're going to go very deeply into this road trip. We're going to get your personal in, uh, impressions of it, um, personal experiences, personal revelations. Uh, let's start right away because there's so much to unpack. Uh, beginning with Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. of course, right? He was a towering figure in the civil rights movement. Um, but there were other leaders before him um, They uh, during and after Reverend King's public uh, career. Many of them adopted very different approaches, but he is seen as a, the saint and martyr of the movement. To concentrate solely on him, though, are we doing ourselves a disservice here? Well, I think it is a big disservice simply because there were just so many people that make up a movement to begin with, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I think when we just house the whole thing under the idea of Martin Luther King, we forget the fact that King himself participated in a long line of really prophetic people mm -hmm. uh, since the time of the Civil War and really prior to that, and which continues today. There are many of us still look at Martin Luther King with his prophetic vision of what humanity should be and we're inspired by him. So it is a disservice for us to just kind of historically pin it based on his public life. We talk about your personal experience here, your personal mm -hmm. revelations. Was there anything that really stood out to you as you made this journey? Did you ever stop and say, man, I've had it wrong all this time? Yeah, I think for me, it just brought me to the, to the point of recognizing the fact that as a white person, right, mm -hmm. uh, I've gone through my life white. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. And I love history, so that was probably one reason why I wanted to revisit all this. But now as a priest, uh, and more importantly, just as a Christian, I've tried so hard to try to be so accepting and loving of other people to mm -hmm. realize I don't understand their story. But there's one thing I can say, and I, I, I was, this was brought with much clarity from this time, is just that the one thing I will not understand about a person of color is simply being a person of color. Right. All right? It's just like I will not understand what it means to have my own children or what it means to be a woman or a mm -hmm. mother, right? Uh, that is something that I will never be able to experience. So I can't just assume that I understand what it means to be a person mm -hmm. of color. And but I think that's very difficult. But you know enough to have the conversation, and do you think that is uh, the best starting point to ease tensions that we've been seeing? I, I definitely think mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. a, a great starting point. Uh, because I think in an age now where we're kind of almost fearing that there's reverse discrimination of some sort, mm -hmm. I mean, discrimination on, on any level by anyone is just wrong, right? But I think that what, I, what it boils down to is that what brought Martin Luther King to the forefront and what made him so successful mm -hmm. was that he understood that the movement had to rest on reclaiming a spiritual mm -hmm. identity, each one of us. Mm -hmm. Dr. King and others. Yes. I have to get this in, yeah. Father, while we're here. The civil rights movement has spiritual undertones. Right. We can't argue that. Uh, God created every human being with equal dignity. What happens when the civil rights movement departs from that, or when we as human beings depart from that thinking? Well, it's us shifting our identity on something else. It could be just what we think we are good at, what we think our physical attributes are about, and when we start to rest our, our, our identity on something that's human and not divine, mm -hmm. uh, that's when we run into problems. And the reality is that our only identity that matters, and we understand this fully as Christians, mm -hmm. is that we are sons and daughters, beloved sons and daughters mm -hmm. of a loving Father. And we experience that in and through the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And King knew that, and that's what gave him a gravitas to recognizing that any type of societal practice or any type of human law is always, always subject to a divine law because mm -hmm. it's not just a law you're following, it's an identity that you claim to because it is your identity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think if there's one thing that we can all learn from the civil rights movement yeah. is for of us to once again reclaim our true identity as beloved sons and daughters. Father John, I hate to have to say this, we are out of time, but it's we okay. have to continue this conversation at another point. There's so much more to learn. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Liz. Always great being here.